at two pride and humility are you there so when i was teaching on pride and humility i said something last time you remember when i was describing what pride is can we go uh, we we were we were studying what the word for pride stands for and there are a number of things we 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 saw are the meanings of pride number 1 we we were studying pride uh, proverbs 16:18 and the bible says pride goes before destruction and a hunty spirit before a fall what is the meaning of destruction so we stayed we stayed around there what does we 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 was trying to figure out what is how does the distraction that comes by pride look like and so we are describing the word distraction how can you know that you've come to the distraction of pride you remember yeah because he said the end game of pride is what hello praise the lord we said the end game of pride is what distraction and we said we must know what distraction look like because if we know how distraction look like we can also know if our lives are being affected by pride if we are eating the fruit of pride and so what we did is that we understood we went to describe the word what distraction and number thing is distraction is 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 breaking of a dream distraction is vexation to irritate to annoy to have petty provocation so we say that if a man is eating the fruit of of pride there will be they will have petty provocation they will be provoked easily what akasirika tu kidogo tu memgusa hivi amekasirika they are like a time bomb you know like they can become emotional any time you are like you get eh ujamsalimia you've not said hi to them in church and suddenly what do they do they are not happy and then he says distraction also means that it's a breaking of a dream or the death of a dream he says and then he says his vexation most of the vexation that people receive is out of pride and its distraction so i want to stay around here can we stay around here around vexation because when we went home me and my wife were discovering we had a conversation about this and i think i want to start here on this because i have realized one of the greatest thing that is a distraction of pride is that most prideful people have something called an entitlement to pain please write there because i feel like i need to stay there okay here is me getting personal to you i'm about to get very personal is that okay i'm about to do all. so look at me so that you never forget this now I want to tell you that your parents were not perfect parents. Is that okay? I want to tell you that you are not a perfect parent. So the vexation most people are entitled to the pain that their parents caused them. My parent did this and so you are here uh, you are you are beyond 18 clearly and you are carrying the vexation of a wounding your parents been because you feel an entitlement to it okay i know you know, maybe probably you never saw it many of us listen i carried an entitlement of the pain of my father of my parents and i remember i didn't know because my my dad and my mom separated early you understand they separated early okay let me tell you my story many of you don't know that my parents were married by the time i'm getting born i was getting born so my dad got married and moved to another lady and they went to mombasa my mom on the other hand when she found out she ran away so where i was what we i wake up one, one morning my grandmother wakes up and hears the baby crying in the room and so he, she goes to the room to look at which baby is crying and and here i am crying i was their first grandson so they find me crying and so i, I was brought up by my grandparents for a long time And so after a while my mom gathered courage came and said my parents want to see the baby but the idea was to steal me and take me to her parents and leave me. So are you understanding me? I can if I can study my life my life has been either in my parents my house in my grandparents house so my whole life I spent 4 years with my mom I spent 3 years with my dad the whole of my life. So do you understand that I can walk with vexation? And as soon as I got to my mom's house when my mom first had her house 
she put me in a boarding school so so yeah so that can be oh my god my parents never loved me i want to tell you that that is rooted in pride it's rooted in pride it's pride that no because you're thinking that probably no they should have done a better job my dad should have worked out things with them why are you feeling so entitled in people's relationship it failed it had nothing to do with you and also they are human okay that's it so so we are raising kids are entitled you are in pain right now you are going through a vexation your life is been going through a hard season because you are in pain because of something your mom and dad did it he says do you understand that right now you are the background your children who come from yes. so you've carried pain all your years now you're about to have a child or you've already have a child if you don't heal and get over that pride of holding on to the vexation and to the pain my parent caused me they didn't educate me you're still in pain years later and god is looking at you who are you by the very fact that you had parents is a blessing he says who said that he, do you understand that we all came to a world that is broken yes. so what do you why don't you think that your parents are also broken Yeah because we 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 you're, you're vexed why do you think that your parents were raised by what is this thing that makes you feel like your parents should have been perfect like you're a perfect human being do you understand this pride yeah your parents were broken so you you want to carry brokenness also to the next generation i'm saying this because i want to tell you drop the pride forgive your po- folks drop the pride oh they could in my dad had money he says maybe true he had money he's misused it and he didn't take you to school but he was broken why are you talking like that is that is why he's not god the father your dad was not god your dad was not a perfect man he's a sinner he's a broken man your mom was not good he says my mom didn't like me he says she probably never knew any other way Maybe she was raised in a way that she didn't know any other way other than to love you that way. Do you understand that, that the picture of love is how we have been loved? So maybe her filter was broken. So you're blaming her and she's been through cycles of brokenness and she just got you and you have suffered the cycle of brokenness. If you don't forgive her, you will replicate. Am I blessing you? Yes. Are you being blessed? Let me show you something. So because someone is asking this is a thought pattern okay let's start this scripture first samuel 12 sub first uh, second samuel 1320 can we study the story of absalom because to me this is a story of men who carries pain this is wounding it says and absalom her brother said to her so amnon had raped the brother tamar of absalom and so he said to her He says say to her I'm not your brother has been with you but now hold your peace my sister he is your brother don't take he, uh, don't take this to heart so Tamar remained what desolate in her brother's Absalom's house are you there let's go to verse 22 let's go to next yeah and Absalom spoke to his brother neither good nor bad for Absalom hated Amnon because he forced uh, had forced his sister Tamar are you there Hey, verse 37. And Absalom, okay, let's go back to the previous one because I want to show you something. Let's go to 21, sorry. Let's go to 21. It says, and when David what? So what did David hear? David had what? Heard of the rape. So when David heard of all the things, he was what? but you know david did nothing you know david did nothing he was just what so he is a parent that has had one of my children has raped another one of my children so he was hungry what else would he have done okay would he have taken one of the child and killed the other child so if you are a parent you know i'm trying to sit in the seat in the shoes of david what would have david done If you are David what would you have done? Would you have killed your child to avenge the other one? What what would you have done? You know I was thinking this this morning 
And I'm thinking, what would I have done if I was David? So the David, the only thing you can do is get angry. It's a normal parent. And some of us are in pain because our parents did nothing over some things. And the problem is that your parents didn't know better. He didn't know what to do. Even your parent could be stuck. Okay, let's not about, talk about your parent. It's because probably your husband didn't know what to do. Yes, I've had it, but I don't know what to do. I don't have an idea. I don't know what to do. You know, I know. Yeah? Even a former pastor, maybe your pastor, you know that, you know some of people carry bitterness, even their former pastor. I want to show you the pride and what it can do to you. So your pastor hears that someone took advantage of you and took money from you. What would a pastor do? So you're mad about your pastor. He didn't do anything. Vire aliskia, umechukua nini? Umechukua pesa. Unirinyanganyo wa pesa. Uwa pastor hakufanya kitu ingine. What can they do? They are not the law. A pastor doesn't have that much power. This is, and so you are holding on to someone because, because some people, sometimes the reason why we don't do anything is because we are also helpless like you. You are holding on to people that are helpless. It's pride. Are you there? Can we keep studying this story? I bless God. You know, verse two, so, uh, so Absalom never spoke to Amnon. Look at verse 37. What Amnon, Ab- Absalom did. Verse, and Absalom fled away. What had he done after? He fled away after he had killed Amnon. And guess what? David is still in the same place. The best he would do is mourn. What else would he do? What else would David do? The only thing David did was mourn. Some of you need to forgive some of your parents, some of your leaders, some of your friends, because at times they didn't have a way out. So if today you come and tell me Pastor Lee has slapped you, what do you expect me to do? Do you understand? You, you, you're understanding, eh? Nashika. What am I, am I supposed to am I, am I supposed to beat her for you, my friend? He says. He says, listen, in the equation of marriage, I will defend my wife. Yeah. He says, I'm a kupiga. Ah, uh, what's an nini? That is the last time you will not. That, that I will not come back to you because I want to keep my marriage, and the, my responsibility is more to my wife, not to you. It's, it's the sadness of life. At times we don't know what to do. At times we don't know what to do. See, some of you say, pastor's wife did this, and then I told the husband and he did nothing. What was this? What did you expect? Okay. I, I, I thought you didn't. You were waiting for me to preach this morning. I'm preaching. This is a preaching. He is a preaching. He says, ume, umesema bibi yangu kuangu. Af- anifanya nini? Nifanya nini? Dia gamohole. Nia dan kampia. <laughs> it's a sad thing about life. And let me tell you, stay, stay in this world. You will get into a place when you cannot do anything. Stay in this world. Stay in this world. And so if you're the one that is in that place, you catch offense on a man that cannot do anything. I'm just trying to say, you cannot be entitled to pain. Stop being entitled to pain. Stop feeling like you own it. You know, I've seen this thing. No, I I need to own my pain. Own it, it will mess you. So what did Absalom do? He owned his pain. So, So he was offended by David. So what do you do? The next thing, Notice that David, look at the heart of David. Look at verse 39. Look at verse 39. It says, and David longed to go to what? For he had what? Confronted, uh, confronted concerning Amnon. Bec- he had been comforted concerning Amnon because he was dead. So what did you expect a father to do? Yeah, he says, yeah, the only thing he can do is embrace back his son, the one that is alive. So you, that is why I'm telling you, some of these things are heavier than you ever imagined. You, you have to be a master so that you don't have the pride of, but he should have done something. He should have told his wife off. He should have told my, my dad should have been a better person, should have done. He didn't know better. Like right now, there are things I see and I like, 
I look back and I'm like, hmm, I can't even blame him. Grow, grow a little. There are some things you're blaming your parents. You will forgive them for. You'll actually go and look at your parents and tell them with where you are, with what you have, you did your best. I actually think I had the most amazing parents. They didn't know better. She says, are you saying yes? I had the most amazing parents. They didn't know better. She says, my mom doesn't talk to me. Did you see, did you know how the mother talked to him? Did you know his experience growing up? So you're demanding something she has never experienced. Your bitter carrying pain right now of a parent that didn't have a better experience. Are you hearing me? That didn't have a better experience. Stop being entitled to what? To pain. <laughs> Are you noticing? Look at this. Can we study this a little? Let's go. Second, second Samuel 14. Second Samuel 14, 28. Put it in the passion, uh, NLT. NLT. He says, and Absalom lived in Jerusalem for two years without getting to see the king. Next verse. Then Absalom sent for Joab to ask him to intercede for him. Are you there? But Joab refused to come. So Joab was David's right-hand man. So he was saying, please talk to the king that he may see me. So what does he do? Now notice, the first thing that comes into, jo into Absalom's heart is entitlement. So what does entitlement? He was entitled. Most of these people calling wounds that are wounds that they, they, they have, they feel like they're entitled to pain. They have this thing. Look at this. And Absalom said for, for this, but he refused to come. But again, Job, Job refused to come. Next verse. Look at entitlement. Next verse. Next verse. So what did Absalom do? Hello? What does he do? He said to his servant, Amukupatiana microphone lewa to Amungu. Oh, okay, let's say. What did Absalom And so Absalom said to his servant, Go and set fire to Joab's field, the field the, next to mine. So they set his field on fire as Absalom had commanded. Wait, wait. Where is the guts to do this? Entitlement. Entitlement. It says entitlement. He says, no, he's entitled. Next verse. He says, and Joab came to Absalom. Absalom and demanded, why, why did, did your, your servant, servant set, set my field on fire? Next verse. And Absalom replied, because I wanted you to ask the king why he brought me back from Geshar. If he didn't... Why he brought me back from Geshagi? You've, you've heard of Geshagi? <laughs> you, you heard, eh? <laughs> he says, if he didn't intend to see me, he says, he's, ni, ni, ni. You, you're understanding the, 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 the entitlement. He says, why did he bring me back? He says, he felt entitled. He says, you just killed your brother. But here you are, you're feeling entitled. The entitlement generation is, is from these days. Very entitled. Very entitled. I don't want to if I, if I, it says it says he might as well have stayed there. Let let me see if he finds guilt of anything. Let him execute, execute me. me. Next verse. Let's finish with that. So Job told the king. Let's go to thirty-three. Let's yeah yeah. It's so, so Job told the king what Absalom had said. Then David. Then at last David summoned him and estranged son, and Absalom came and bowed low before the king, and David kissed him. I ask you, what would the father done? So he ran away. David invited him back. And David is here kissing him. Kissing him is, I have allowed you again back into my presence. I'm just saying this. I actually think that David was an amazing father. Well, I'm one of the people that have actually criticized the fatherhood of David. But I'm here repenting again. Because also I don't know what he would have done. He was not a broken man. He was a man like any other man. He didn't know what he would have done. It was not one of his subjects. It was one of his children. So... I wish he had forgiven his father. I want to say this as we begin here. I wish you forgive your father. I wish you forgive your mother. I wish you forgive that pastor that wounded you. I wish you forgive that boyfriend and that girlfriend. Some of them don't know better. And they don't know what to do. 
forgive them. Stop being, it's true. I'm not downplaying what they did to you. Okay. I'm not downplaying what they did to you. It is true they hurt you. Nobody has refused. Nobody has refused they hurt you. But they did know better. They did their best. According to their human possibility, had they been God, they would have done better. So one of the biggest things about pride is entitlement to what? Entitlement to pain. I feel it. I feel it. I'm entitled to pain. Okay, that's number one. Can we go on? Okay, let's go back to humility and let's see this. So we were saying that one of God's, one of the things that you need to know is, let's go to James 4. It says, it is your personal, we, I want to go back to this. It is your personal responsibility to humble yourself. God does not humble people. And when he does, it's called humiliation. James 4.10. Look at it. It says, humble where? Yourself. Me. Humble yourself. So whose responsibility is it for them to be humble? Guys, today you have to talk. I know it's cold, but you have to preach with me. Is that okay? Yes. yes. Whose responsibility is it for humility? Yes. Who humbles him? Who, ha who takes the responsibility of humility? Yes. So you are the one that humbles yourself. Is that okay? Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And then he says something, he will lift you up. So there's a price for humility. He says, God lifts the humble. He says, I can tell you, even if you don't pray, you can be sure of lifting if you are humble. You know, there are principles that you can execute that you can use the principle to rise. One of the principles of rising is what? Humility. Is humility. I'll show you that very well today. That's what I, I intend to do. Look at this, 2 Samuel 22, 22, 28. It says, you rescue the humble, but your eyes watch the proud to what? To humiliate them. To humiliate them. The Hebrew word here for humiliate is shapel, S-H-P-E-L. It means to humiliate. It means to bring down. Which means, what does he do with the proud? He brings them down. Are you getting me? So what does he do with the proud? He brings them down. It is a word that is in Proverbs 29, 32, uh, 23. Proverbs 29, 23 in, in NLT. Proverbs 29, 23 in NLT says something very interesting. He says, pride ends in humiliation, while humility brings honor. Are you noticing that that is so much in scripture? What does pride end in? Pride has an end. It's called humiliation. Are you hearing me? It's called what? Humiliation. But notice, while humility brings what? Honor. In short form, there's something that God keeps saying. Two things I've seen. One, he gives grace to the humble. You understand grace is, grace, when grace is put upon you, is the capacity to be able to become or do something you wouldn't have been able to do by your own self. So he says, he has given me grace for finances. And we talked about grace. And notice that when you study 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, you'll notice that the Bible says that, the, that it talks about the grace of resources. Are you getting me? So he can give you the grace for finances. Because grace is not just the saving grace. And God is will generous in all you need, everything, plenty. Is this 9, 8? Uh -huh. Next, is it? Uh -huh. Next verse. And God will, as is the it, scriptures say, uh -huh. godly people give generously to the poor. Go back, put it in uh, King James Version. God is able to make all grace abound. And God is able to make all creative. grace abound towards you. That you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Notice, what is he giving? Hello? What does he give for increase financially? Can you read with me again? If he wants to increase you financially, what does he do? If he wants to increase you financially, what does he do? He gives grace. 
Are you getting me? This is just one of the grace other than the saving grace. There is grace that brings financial increase. There is also grace for giftings. There is also grace for rankings in the spirit. Are you getting me? So when God wants to lift you, he will give you grace. Or he will put on on you. That is the lifting of God over your life. Are you hearing me? So humility unlocks grace for your lifting. Some of you, are you getting me? So humility does what? Unlocks grace for your lifting. You know, the Webster, the, the, the Webster Dictionary defines humility as to reduce someone to a lower position in one's own eyes. Are you getting me? Humiliation means, the Webster Dictionary, it means to reduce someone to a low, po, lower position in one's own eyes and all others. Which means, God is like, mm, I will lower you in your own eyes. I will stop making you, you will stop seeing yourself bigger the way you look at yourself big. And he's like, let me work on you. Look at this, Daniel 4, 28. This is what people, you know, seeing people ask you, hey, is there anything like humiliation? And, it, and this came upon Nebuchadnezzar. Next, next verse. He says, and at the end of the 12th month, he was walking about the royal palace of what? Babylon. Of Babylon. Next verse. And the, the king, king spoke, spoke saying, saying, is it not this, this great Babylon that, that what? I have I, built? Notice that what? I, I, have I, have built. I have built for what? For a loyal dwelling. By what? By, By my, my mighty power. power. And for the honor, honor of, of my, my majesty. majesty. Me, myself, and I. Oh, glorify my name. Next verse. While the, While word, the word was still, was in, still in the king's, the king's mouth, mouth. A voice fell from heaven, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has, has departed, departed from, you. from you. Next verse. And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They, they shall, shall make, make you eat grass, grass like, like oxen. Yani, wait, 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 wait. Yani, Nebuchadnezzar alijipata amegeuka ngombe. But the problem was pride. So God was humiliating him. Do you understand a king eating grass? Do you understand that the way, the way God had made his stomach, that his stomach could accommodate grass? In short, for by the time, like, mungu alikuwa meamua, wewe utakula nyasi na akuna kitu na kuharibikia, akuwa na umua, na akuwa na tamani nyama, ata akimwekea nyama, appetite ya nyama ikapotea. The man remained on grass diet, kama ngombe. I'm just trying to tell you, it is a humiliation of God. He says, when he humbles you himself, and as a, you, you are a man, but you can find yourself as a cow. Are you getting me? You know, I've seen people, I've seen God humble men. You wonder how comes you are humble like that? You wonder how did this man become this? But when he humbles you, he's so, he's so tragic. He's so tragic. Anyway, I don't want to go, to go into that more. Mm -hmm. Let me show you something else. I, I'm, I'm about to finish. Today we're finishing early. Humbling yourself. One of the ways. So, can you stop making noise? I preach. I trust you. Okay, First Peter 5, 6. Hum one of the ways of humbling yourself is casting your cares. I'm going to show this. Therefore, humble who? Yourselves. Under what? The, the mighty, mighty hand, hand of God. God. That he may do what? He may, he may exalt, exalt you, you in, in due time. time. Then, notice. what. We go back. We talked about. And then he says, are you noticing the last, the last, what is the last statement there? That he may exalt you in due no, no, time. No, 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 no. There's, there's some, what is the last thing he says there? What is the last thing that is written there? Yeah? What is the last thing written there? What is the last thing written there? Hello. Yeah, because most of the time I, I say this, is that this thing make all the difference in the statement. Is that okay? So comma, and then he says, go on, casting See, all, all your care. care Let's go him. back again. Can we go back again? Therefore, humble yourself 
under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. And then he says, how are you doing it? Casting all, all your, your cares care upon, upon him, him for he cares, cares for, for you. you. Which means a person who worries is a proud person. Worry is one of the signs of what? Pride. Put it in amplified version. I think I liked it in amplified. He says, if you are a warrior, you are, you, therefore humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Set aside what? Please. Set aside what? Self-righteous pride. Self pride. So that he may what? He may exalt, exalt you to, to the place of honor, honor in his in service his at the appropriate time. time. Next verse. Casting, Casting all, all your cares, all, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once, once and for all, all on him. him. Okay, let's say for this. He cares. Let's say this. Let me show you how it is. Because some of you are saying, okay, I didn't understand. Can I show you one more scripture that will help you understand this? Let's go to Philippians 4.6. Philippians 4.6, amplified version. It says, ahead, do not what? Be anxious or, or what? worried, worried about, about anything, anything, but in every anything, circumstance and, and situation, situation by prayer. prayer and Stop there. Petition. What did I tell you prayer is? What did I say prayer is last time? I said one of the biggest markers of humility is prayer. Is that okay? Which means the reason why he says, he says, you cast your cares upon him. He's simply saying, if you're going through a situation, don't worry, pray. Which means if you're not praying, you're worrying. It means you're not casting your care. Which means you probably think you can handle it yourself. You don't need me. There is no need of God. You are, you are the all-sufficiency way maker. Are you getting me? Because what does prayer, what does it say when you are worried and you are praying to him? It is you humbling yourself. It is you saying, oh God, I cannot do this. You can do this for me. I trust you to do this for me. It is you getting, because what does worry do? Worry fills your mind with self. What does it do? Worry just feels because worry will exalt everything else above God. Oh my God, ni naisha. He rent kikosa kuripwa. Ni taisha. Ni taisha. And then God is looking at you and I'm like, why are you not throwing your problems to me? Do you know I can handle it? And he's there. Some of you are saying, oh Christ in me. The hope of glory. And then Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's seeing you glorify a problem. And magnify a problem. So, because if you are worrying, you're magnifying something. No, 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 you didn't hear me. If you are worrying, you are magnifying something. You are magnifying the very thing that you are worried about. Which means you are lifting up that thing above his ability to change it. And so you are seated in the seat of pride. Because you don't need him. God is looking for people to stop worrying. And have you ever noticed any time you pray, your worry ceases? Have you ever had an issue so much that the best thing, and then when you spend time praying, it is stopped? Because he's supposed to be filling your mind, but then in the place of him filling your mind is worry. Is that issue filling your mind? Oh, I don't know. I've been praying. Things are not changing. Who said things are not changing? The fact that you cannot see anything physically does not say that nothing is changing. Praise the Lord. Are you there? Have you been blessed? Yeah. Things are changing. Let me start. Let's go something else. Let's do something else. But put it in the Passion Translation. Again. Put this in the Passion Translation. It says, don't be pulled in different direction or worried about things. Be saturated in prayer, in prayer throughout, throughout each day. day. Be saturated. Worry saturates does not saturate you with prayer. Worry pulls you in many directions. It actually pulls you from him. He says, he says offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail over your life. I decree in Jesus' name, you will pray, you will not worry. I decree in Jesus' name, you will pray, you will not worry. 
Worry shall not fill your heart. Prayer will burst from you in Jesus' name. Yeah. That is why you'll notice that in seasons of prayer, many of you have solutions. It's because in seasons of prayer like this, it is seasons of humility. And so, you notice, no, I was praying, I didn't have a job, and then suddenly a promotion came and I was promoted. Well, it is, was your season of humility, you receive a lifting. So guess where we are in this season of prayer and fasting? We are in the season of lifting. So some of you are seeing like you're just lacking food. No, no, no. You're in the season of uh, humbling yourself for his lifting. Amen. That is why you see... <laughs> Notice that any time God, any time the Spirit of God captured a man, the first thing he would do is that he would capture him and take him into the place of prayer. Why? Because he was taking him to the place of humility for the lifting that he was waiting. Any time God wants to lift you and take you to the next season, he will take you to a season of humbling yourself. That is why he, some of you, you've been feeling it. And he's like, no, I just want you to humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself, humble yourself. And then you're like, no, no, I don't feel like fasting. I don't want, I don't have the, the, the energy. I don't have the grace to fast. And then God is looking at you. You won't have the grace for anything because he gives grace to the humble. So you, you stay with your stomach full. I keep my grace because you can humble. He's willing to give grace to the 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 humble. And he's going to release grace to the humble. As you humble yourself, his grace is coming upon you. A new dimension of grace is being released over your family. It's been released over your children. It's been released over your business. It's been released over your family. It's been released over your ministry. Grace is being released. As you humble yourself, grace is being released. In the name of Jesus. That's it. He gives grace to the humble. Let me show you something. Look, let's study the life of Jesus. Philippians 2.3. Philippians 2.3. Let's study the life of Jesus a little. Are you there? I think I might end around here. Around here is around here. Can you? Amen. Are you being blessed? Amen. Is this blessing you? Yes, sir. Are you being built? In Jesus' name. Can we read this? Let, Let nothing, nothing be, be done, done through, selfish through selfish ambition, ambition and, conceit. and conceit, but, but in, in loneliness of mind. mind Let, Let each esteem others better than, than himself. himself. Okay, let's wait there. We shall study this text. It's, it's a long one, so we shall stay here for a while. Now, so he says, let nothing be done with what? Selfish ambition. Okay, what is selfishness? Selfishness, selfish ambition. No, put it in King James. The, not the new. Uh, this, the, the, old, the, old, the, the Nothing should be new. Like, there should be a new one. Anyway, let nothing be done through strife. Strife of vain glory. Let, let's, stay, let, let, let's stay at strife. Do you know what strife is? Strife, in the Greek description of this word strife, the word strife here means self-centeredness. Please write there. Let nothing be done through self-centeredness. Let nothing be done through self-centeredness. Vain glory is to have a high and a, and a big regard of themselves. It's to see yourself very highly. It's to see yourself very superior. It's to see yourself, it's actually to regard yourself higher than you ought to be, regard yourself. So it says, let nothing be done in self-centeredness and all seeing yourself higher than you ought to. Let me show you something about self-centeredness. Self-centeredness or strife is what we are talking about James, James, uh, James 3.16. You know, in James 3.16, I've read this scripture very many times. But for where there is what? Envying. And, and what? Strife, and strife. There is every confusion and every and work every of the enemy. So I, I was, the, 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 the strife we are talking about here is actually where there is envy. Do you understand that envy is founded in self-centeredness? 
Because envy says, what you have should be mine, it should be yours. Praise the Lord. Envy says that person is, you're looking at their thing. Because why are you envious that someone, that someone is getting married and you're not? It's because you're feeling it should be your turn, not theirs. Hello. Yes. Why are you feeling like someone just bought a car and you're like, Gai, amenunua gari. It's because you're feeling it should be your turn. You're actually feeling so bad it should be your turn. Now notice where there is envy and self-centeredness. So now notice, is there. It's confusion and every work of the enemy. Now look at this. So a person is envious and a person is self-centeredness. Guess what? That person can do witchcraft. That person can go to a witch, which means we are beginning to open the cans of every work of the enemy. Are you getting me? Why? Because this person is envious. This person is full of themselves. So we are talking about slander for this person is easy. Which means developing a funny story other than that is not true just to bring you down is very easy. Because if their heart, if they are full of themselves, their pride is out of, out of this world. Which means if we are a church like this and then envy and strife enters, suddenly unanza kusikia, vile meiri alikuwa naomba na deno. I think hapo kuna kitu. What we want to talk about here, Papa, we are going to come. We are going to talk about here. Ah, we are going to get Jana. Msiana tu, ata aliva tu nguo. Ali talk. Uyo msiana, anata kutunyanganya mabwana. You understand? What is there, my friend? Most of that is women that feel like they lost their youth. Yeah, old women that feel like they lost their youth. And so here is a girl enjoying her youth and envy. Envy fills her heart. And what else? Envy and, 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 and strife enters our heart. And so that woman begin to develop a story about the young people in the church. Yokanisa, the young people kwa kanisa na kangani wa sherati. Where did that come from? It's envy and strife. And insecurity. It's been full of self. Praise the Lord. Are you been blessed? Is this building you? It is. It says you are, you are about to get promoted. And someone feels jealous and says, no, the way the boss is looking at her, this boss is like he's sleeping with her. No wonder he's favoring her. So guess what? Even though your lifting is coming, someone is envious and jealous. And so the work of the enemy begins. That's how that now they now, this is the foundation of witchcraft. This is a school of witchcraft. Yeah, and, 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 and at this point, you're one step closer to being a word. A witch. Let me tell you something. Can I give you news? I want to tell you that there is someone in this church that will be lifted more than you. Are you getting me? I want to tell you the thing you're praying for right now. Someone close to you is about to get it faster than you. With lesser effort than you. Do you know, anytime you see, you know, that's why. You see these preachers that are online talking bad about preachers? Other preachers? No, it's those are followers. <laughs> yeah, those are followers. The thing is, they admire what they have, but because they can't have it, they will tarnish it. Or because the enemy has lied to them, they can't have it. It has entered into their hearts for strife and envy. Hey, Wumshana, Anakuanga Haji. Hey, unamuona anga haji? Hata mi, nikimuangalia sisiki yangi kama na mpenda. Strife and envy. Roho yangu wa impendangi, strife and envy imeingia. Nani alikuambia wewe? Roho yako ndiyo ipendi. If your love, heart is not loving, your heart is having issues. Okay, I'm saying there's a place for discernment. I'm not refusing the discernment part. But wezi kuona kosa kupenda kwa sichana wote. Anyway. Do you know this thing can be dangerous in marriage? I just feel like should, I should do this. Do you know this thing can be dangerous in marriage? Yeah. This thing can be dangerous in marriage. So that the wife begins to strive with the husband because he's seeing the husband is advancing and she's going nowhere. And most of the time it's because people are not dreaming. Are you hearing me? It's because probably the wife is not pursuing her dreams. It is these things that one oh, you make, need to make sure that your wife works so that you don't have conflict in the house. No, the problem is not that the, uh, you can have a wife that does not work and not strife. 
The problem is that she stays at home, sees you excelling, but for her nothing is happening and so she begins to strive for you on the basis that she's feeling like you're succeeding more than her and you're enjoying in life. That's the thing. In your life, you need to, let me tell you, if you're married, you need to make and purpose it in your heart to celebrate your wife and your husband as they advance. Married people, can you hear me? Yeah, otherwise you begin to slander. No, I know. You begin to slander the husband. You begin to call people and say, that man is not a good man. Yeah, I know people that have slandered their spouses. And they can, but it's actually envy and strife. He says, that is a thing that begins to, ukimona. do you understand that as soon as your husband leaves your wife, he meets other more beautiful than you, wives and girls like you? Like your wife, your husband will have numbers of beautiful girls, just so you know. Like, oh, wow, oh, you, you, you never went to this school. Let me introduce you to this school. Your husband will have numbers of beautiful girls because your husband is working and doing business. He's at work, please. He needs to talk his, into, in his workplace, there are beautiful girls. Your wife will have numbers of handsome men. You know, I've seen so much pettiness. He says, listen, if you decide, if you're going to decide the two of you to rise, oh, this strife and envy that comes from jealousy, you better deal with it. This is not my salmon. Why am I staying here? Do you understand? My friend, I was in Nigeria for a whole day, week. A whole week. Did my wife know the girls I met? Did she lack sleep? Did, do I know where she went? He says, yeah. But if there's, a, if there's a spirit on envy and strife, you will strife over this. You'll, and most of the time, I want to say this, most of the time, Strife comes around where people are not following dreams and visions. Look around. When, if you look in a congregation, and you see people that have purpose and destiny, people that are going after something have no strife. My friend, the time I have Yakuvurugana na Bibi, I should be creating a salmon. Some of you are saying, Akipa, see, your salmon is deep. It is because that time I was, the time I got this depth, I was not strifing with her. Alinambia, babe, nenda ukaskize neno. That's it. Look at your neighbor and tell them you shall not strive. You shall not be self-centered. He says we should learn to we should learn to celebrate the success of our people. The day I saw my wife standing at Drema Fist, I was like, we have made it. No, no, she no, she didn't make it alone. I made it. No. Because I have I have no room to have strife and jealousy. And then the next few days after Kwenda Apo Nianza Kumwambi on a fakuacha kubiri. Kwa inyumba ni mimi baba. Not strive. Listen, young men, those of you that are getting married, those of you that are like, no, mimi bibi yangu ezi fanya kazi, it's because you're, you're full of strife. It's okay, maybe it's a plan that you have, but if you're coming from it from insecurity, please deal with your heart. Because I know there are people that have planned by their getting married that the mother, that the wife shall stay in the house to raise their children. But if that is not the reason, if it's insecurity, you need to grow up. Let's go back to James, Philippians 2, 3. That was not my sermon, but I hope this has hit your heart. Is that, has that blessed you? He says, but what? In humility, in lowliness of mind, let each esteem what? Other better, better than, than themselves. themselves. So, next verse. Look at this, what he says. Look at every man on his own thing, but every man also as one. Uh -huh. Are you there? Can we continue? Next verse. Let this mind, which mind? Mind of Christ be in you. Hey, which mind? We say the mind of Christ. He didn't say, no, 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 no. We just say, let this mind be in you, which was, in, which was also in Christ. What was the mind that was in Christ? We need to say, oh, have the mind in Christ. Let this, no, 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 no. We need to go, we, because we read text and crop them and we don't know the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is the mind that was before. So what was the mind of Christ? He didn't have strife. Are you getting me? 
Number two, he didn't have what? He didn't have what? He didn't have strife and what? He didn't have, he didn't have uh, conceit in his heart. He didn't have it in his heart. Are you getting me? And the Bible says, he saw each, he says, which means in his mind, he saw us more valuable than him. Do you want us to go back again? Let's go back. Let's study. Because we are trying to study what was this. Because he says this mind. So we are studying what was this mind. He says, let nothing be done through strife and vigority, but in lawlessness of... Put in Passion Translation. I know this. I'm loving this someone. It says, be free, be from free from pride-filled opinion. opinions. For uh, they will only have harm your you. cherished unity. Uh -huh. Don't, Don't allow, allow self-promotion self to, to hide where? Hearts. To hide where? In our hearts. Uh -huh. But in authentic humility, humility put others put first, others first and, view and view others, others as, as more important, important as yourself. yourself. Do you understand that this is a thing that makes most churches people begin to compete? You know, one of Rev's sons was in our house last night. One of his dearest son. And he said something, Rev, Rev Julian. He said something that was very key. Because he said, he said something that was very key. The pressure of working with the Rev is that you feel like, you know, he's a lot of money, is that you might feel to want to be in his level. So what will happen is, he's driving, a, he's driving V8s. So what happens? You want to get a loan to buy a V8, which you are not ready for, so that you can be in the same level. And he says, you have to check your heart in that place, so that you don't want to be, you see, you see, that thing that is on the inside of you that wants to give you something that you're not qualified for that wants to give you positions you're not qualified for that thing that says mm, mm, that thing that tells you to say oh, that's a reason we have not given you the position it is this it is, it is that mindset it is not a mindset of humility. Can we go on? He says, so put others first. Do you ever at any point think that this person should have this, not me? Let me say this. Do you know I've never preached in Roak? Do you know how many know, I've, you've never, you know that I've never preached in Roak? Now, no, I led prayer. I've not preached. But guess what? Do you know how many people have taken there to preach? I've taken Pastor Isi. I've taken prophetomy. I just took Pastor Ayo. All those things, I've taken prophetomy them for people and I've never preached. The question is, and the reason why people don't open opportunities that are big for others is because they don't see other people qualified. They don't, they, they can't see it. So Nangalia, so if I don't, I'm not the one getting it, I can't open the opportunity for you. Pastor Maureen, the one that invited Rev. And, you know, part of the people that invited talked to P Pastor Julian so that she could, he could probably have Rev. Julia, Rev. Pastor Lee in Remafis. They didn't preach in Remafis. Some of them didn't even hold the microphone. Says, is there anybody having a better opportunity than you anywhere because you opened a door for them? Have you ever looked at a person and said, no, those ones deserve that. I'm still growing. It's okay. You need to know your level. Like, have an accurate description. Oh, he, he ngumu leo. That's it. This is what Jesus was saying. Because what did Jesus do? What was the mind of Christ? He says, these people, I'm looking at them. I see them better than me. I see them glorified. And so what I'm going to do, I look. Do you understand he was looking at a drunkard? And looking at a drunkard and saying, no, no, the mind that was in Christ, let it be in you. He was looking at the drunkard and saying, this drunkard deserves better. This drunkard, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to elevate him to the level I am. What was the level Jesus, what was the level, was, was the level Jesus in? He was in the level of sonship. He was in the level of sonship. So he was looking at a drunkard and says, no, 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 no. I can raise him to be a son like I am. And so he came to the world in humility. In humility. And his humility elevated us to his status. I'm asking, is it true? Okay, let's study that verse. Can we finish it? Verse 4. 
Let's go to verse. Abandon. It says, look at this. It says, abandon every dis display of selfishness. Possess greater concern for what matters of others instead of your own interest. These are the gospels that are not taught in churches. Because it will call a lot. It will open a lot. Now, do you understand why you can, by this you understand why now you can spend more time interceding for others? Are you getting me? You can pray more for others more than you pray for yourself because you're like, oh my God, you see a need. You have a need. So that you, which means your prayer life is not about me, myself, and I. Because the world is bringing us to a consciousness of me, myself, and I. I'm the king, I'm the Lord, I'm everything. But God, the Christ consciousness, the mind of Christ brings you to begin to look at your brother better. <laughs> wow, I knew it would go this way. Next verse. He says, and consider, and consider the, example, the example that Jesus, the anointed one, has set before us. Uh -huh. Let his mindset become your motivation. Next verse. Put it, put it, uh, he existed in the form of God, uh, uh, yet he gave no thought to seizing equality with God now, as his wait, supreme wait. prize. Are you noticing? The man was already in the form of God. He says he was not going to become. And in his humility of mind, what does he do? He relinquishes the God nature. Can you leave a position for someone to be elevated? We're talking about elevation. Can you, can you give people things that you know? Can you give people positions and things that you know that probably it would do, but you're like, no. I think, you know, our parents growing were very interesting because you'd hear very interesting stories. Our parents were very selfless. You'd hear, Pana, Mimi Kwanza Niri Toka Shule, Sistangu Engie Form 1. Yeah. You know, you know, Bishop, Bishop, uh, Bishop uh, if there's a mark of a man of selflessness, is a uh, Bishop. Because Bishop will say, no. Like, he, he has these stories more than, like, he should have finished school earlier. Bishop postponed buying a piece of land because he had people to educate. It is this mind that can help your family. Some of you are driving big cars. It's, it's a good thing. Or some of you are owning big things. Some of those things, what if you posed buying some of those things to be a blessing to your sister and to your brother back at home? What, because most of the time think, oh my God, nikikosa kufanya even imeisha. You know, I, I remember, I think I, I'm glad Wamboa is in this, is in this church. Because one of the things I am, admire about him is his selfness with his family. With his brothers and his, his two brothers. I have seen him, I remember one of the time he was taking a big house. He needed, he took a, is it, was it a two bedroom? He took a two bedroom house. Because his brothers were coming to Nairobi and he's one paying. And I'm like, but he didn't need it. He didn't need it at all. But he was doing it for his brother. I'm just trying to say, can you step, can you do something? Can you sacrifice some things for someone else to be lifted? This is the mind of Christ, which is the mind of humility. <laughs> let's, let's finish here. So, verse 7. He says, he, said indeed, he emptied himself of uh -huh. his outward glory. By reducing, By reducing himself, himself to the form of a lowly servant. Wait, let's stop there. He, what did he do? He emptied himself uh -huh, of, of his, his outward, outward glory. glory. By reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant. Now, wait, wait, wait. You, are you noticing the word servant here? Yeah. Which means servants, servants have the ability to reduce their glory to serve. Which means servanthood is humility. That is why God is a lifter of servants. <laughs> if, in short form, he says he reduced himself. In short form, he intentionally do it. We know you are a CEO, but servanthood said, I put my CEO down that I may wash the church. Which means if we want to see a humble person, we should look at their lives and see their service life. Don't say, oh, I'm humble when I'm not seeing you serve. How are you serving? How are you serving? Because the mind, this mind that was in Christ Jesus was a mind of service. So how are you serving? And here, this church gives opportunity for you to serve every Sunday. It just needs you to wake up a little bit earlier to come and serve. After service, there will be opportunity to serve. And be like, oh, no, 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 no. Me, I, 
I wore my best clothes on Sunday. I can dirty them. He reduced himself. <laughs> he reduced himself. He emptied himself. He says, which means the principle of service is in emptying yourself. Men serve because they have emptied themselves. And it's not, you're not, you're emptying yourself of what? Of the, of that glory, of his outward glory. He says by reducing himself, which means he personally took it upon himself to reduce himself. His service was him taking, do you understand? He reduced himself to a servant. He says, no, 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 no. I know I'm the king of glory. I'm the Lord of law. Nations bow before me. By me was the world created, but I build, I reduce myself. Times are coming that we shall have governors and beings serving in the door because they decided that I'm reducing myself. This glory that I'm carrying, I reduce it. He became human. You see, let me, when I say human was reducing himself, it's crazy because the very being he created, he became it. Do you understand? The very being he formed, he became it. You, you understand? You, you decide, no, 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 no. For the sake of redeeming my iPhones, I shall become an iPhone myself. I'm just trying to say, that's the mind of Christ. See, some of you need to go and begin to decide now, how shall I begin to reduce myself? But now look at this. I love this text. I read it this morning. It filled my heart. Uh -huh. Go back to King. Okay, put it. Go, go back. Go back to verse seven. Put it in King James version. I need it to read it. I need us to read it. It says, "But he made, made himself, himself of, of no reputation. of no reputation." Are you getting me? He decided, no, 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 no. In this church, I'm going to put aside my reputation and clean the house. He says, "The toilet." Sit in Oh my God, how come they are not cleaning toilets these days? And then King okay, Church Nafanya. He says, there are men that have made myself, themselves of no reputation. There are men. Okay, some of you are asking why am I speaking like this. The guy that was carrying us, the guy that was carrying me in, 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 as a driver in, uh, in Abuja this last week has, I think, two PhDs or two. He's a doctor. He was my driver. I'm like, you wait, you're a doctor. The next one that carried me was also a doctor. And I'm like, hey, my doctor. I have to say me degree. Congratulations for those that got degree. Not to okay. I'm not. But do you understand? But I'm just trying to say. He says, men have decided that I'm going to put this glory down. This glory down. I'm the newest wife in this church. Men decide to put the glory down. To be of no reputation. He took upon him. He says, the form of a servant. He took the form of a servant. He says, and was made in likeness of men. But now look at this. Notice, what is the last statement there? Hello? What is the last statement? And was made in the is likeness that, no, of No, 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 wait, wait. Unapotea. What is the last thing? What is the last thing that is said? Colon, colon. Colon, exactly. Next verse. So now, which means this is, he's giving us the reason. He says this, and being found in fashion of man, he, he humbled, humbled himself, himself and became obedient to death. Wait, which means all this was him humbling himself. Yeah. His service was him humbling himself. The service is you humbling yourself. We should never lack people to serve because we serve a church that of humble people. Amen. You guys are humble. This church should never like Amen. people to serve in the worship team. We should never lack people to serve anywhere because what are you doing? You're humble. He says, and he became obedient unto death, even, even the death of the cross. Now look at this, and we are ending here. I can't finish this sermon, it looks like so. Uh, therefore, God, a uh -huh, has also highly exalted him and, and given what? him a name which is above every name. Wait, 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 wait. So, because he humbled himself, what did God do? Wherefore God has highly exalted him. In short form, humble yourself and you shall be what? Exalted. Which means the lifting of Jesus was out of his humility. Yeah. 
it was not positional. The man earned his lifting by his humbling himself on the cross, by taking the shape of man. Some of you want to be lifted. There is a way. The mind of Christ is clear. The mind of lifting, the way of lifting is clear. Can you humble yourself? There's a lifting for you. There's a lifting for you. Are you there? So therefore, which means, so after, you understand what therefore means? He's saying in this reason, this is the reason why God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Next verse. That, that at the name of Jesus, every should bow. shall bow. And, and of, of things, things in heaven, heaven and of things, things on earth, earth and, and things, things under, under the earth. earth. Semicolon. Next verse. And that every, every tongue, tongue should shall confess, confess that, that Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is the Lord, Lord to, to the, the glory of God, God the Father. Father. How, what is the way? What is the way for your lifting? Humility. Humility. How does it look like putting other people ahead of Thinking yourself? Of them more highly. Praise the Lord. What does it look like? It looks like service. Yes. So you cannot say I'm humble without service. It's not that I came to recruit workers. Trust me. But I came to recruit workers. Are you getting me? Get yourself somewhere to serve. On Saturday, on Friday, I taught something. I told, some, I told you something. Intercession is service to God. He says, that is it. Even giving is service to God. Forget about your giving for what? Giving is service to God. Your prayer life, your intercession, praying for others is service to God. It means tonight you have an opportunity to serve God. You have an opportunity to be a servant. What will you do? You will go home and begin to pray and intercede for someone. You'll be serving God. I decree in Jesus' name, servants are arising in this church. Servants are arising in this church. Servants are arising in this church. Men are going to humble themselves. Men are going to humble themselves. In the name of Jesus. Let me keep my word. Be on your feet.